Do you remember choosing what university you wanted to attend? I know I do. I remember plenty of googling and attending information sessions before making my decision. This process of gathering and evaluating knowledge to make a decision is called evidence-informed decision-making. This is crucial in healthcare where scientific research needs to continuously be guiding the decisions made and the care provided. Unfortunately, this can be very difficult to do in practice. McLean et al. telephone interviewed over 13,000 adults in the United States about health care they received. They reported in the New England Journal of Medicine that on average, Americans receive a half of recommended medical care. Scientific literature can take a long time to translate into practice. In fact, upon reviewing available research on time lags in healthcare, Morris, Wooding, and Grant estimated in 2011 that it takes an average of 17 years for research to actually translate into healthcare practices. This transfer and exchange of information between different areas of science is called knowledge translation. It involves interactions between scientists, doctors, and patients. There are many models of knowledge translation. One frequently cited model, first described by Graham et al. in 2006, is called the knowledge to action model. It divides knowledge translation into two parts, the knowledge creation funnel and the action cycle. The main steps of knowledge creation are inquiry into primary literature, evaluation and grouping of relevant ideas, and the development of knowledge tools such as practice guidelines or decision aids. An example of this knowledge creation can be seen in McMaster's undergraduate course, Demystifying Medicine. In this course, groups of students work to find, evaluate, and summarize research on complex medical topics in YouTube videos, such as this one. The second part of the knowledge to action model is the action cycle. The action cycle involves applying the knowledge to a particular problem and then adapting the knowledge to a local context to try and address the reality of the target audience. Then barriers to the use of knowledge need to be considered. After the intervention is implemented, it can be monitored, evaluated, and sustained. Let's consider a case study in which the action cycle is applied by Claude Juvenel and Hawks. They identified low awareness about the importance of folate among women of reproductive age in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. They surveyed knowledge, attitudes, and practices of 150 females of reproductive age and noted that only 53% knew what folate was and 16% were aware of its importance in preventing spina bifida. They considered barriers women might face in implementing the knowledge, noting that men often controlled household resources and needed to be on board with medical decisions. After this, culturally tailored radio broadcasts and educational videos were developed in Swahili with French subtitles to raise awareness on folate and prompt action. Evaluating the results of the video, they reported high viewer satisfaction and knowledge gain with 95% of those surveyed agreeing that it was a clear, enjoyable, and understandable video that dealt with an important topic and should be widely disseminated. To quickly summarize, knowledge translation requires asking, for whom is the knowledge being translated? The message needs to be relevant and understandable by that specific audience. What particular knowledge should be translated and disseminated? What will be relevant to the audience? Where and when will the knowledge be used? Translators need to keep in mind the local context in which the knowledge will be applied and identify barriers that might prevent the use of knowledge. Why is the knowledge being translated? For example, is the purpose to inform, assist in decision-making, or prompt action? All these steps can reduce the gap between what is known and what is done. We hope this video helped you better understand knowledge translation.